Sunday, rock stars, and welcome back to our 12 days of FMQ FAQ. Today is day seven, and my name is Holly and Knight of String and Story, and it is my job to guide you to quote with confidence. If you were here right at 11 a.m., thank you so much for your timeliness. I apologize for my tardiness. You know, there's a reason I don't typically do lives on Sunday. It's because it's very hard to control my schedule on Sunday, and I'm fresh from therapy. So, we support therapy, we support getting the help we need, and that needed to take priority this morning. So again, I thank you for your patience, and I thank you for joining me today as we continue our conversation around free motion quilting. Today, we're going to be starting a three-day conversation all about tension. This is the most common question I actually get about free motion quilting, and I think the one that uh, tends to be the biggest and the most scary for rock stars who are interested in learning how to finish their own quilts. Before we jump into that today, I do just want to remind you of three things that are down in the caption of this video. So first of all, you'll see a little blurb about tension and you will see a link to a blog that is all about perfect tension for free motion quilting. This is specifically focusing on your domestic. Good morning, Terry. Uh, but that's gonna be a great resource for you as we go through these next couple of days, all right? Below that, you're gonna see an invitation starting next Monday, so a week from tomorrow. Tomorrow, we are going to be having the quilting plan challenge. That's going to be a five day free event right here on YouTube where I focus on the question, what the heck do I quilt where? How do I quilt my quilt? How do I make decisions about what to quilt on my quilt so that I can finish it myself without being afraid I'm going to ruin my beautiful quilt top? Like I said, it's a totally free event, but I have a registration link in the caption for you because there's a really cool workbook that I'd love to send you so that as we're going along today, um, you can actually get to fill in the blanks and build yourself a resource that will serve you over and over and over again. All right. Finally, I do want to remind you that if you have not already hit subscribe to our YouTube channel, it'll make it easier to find me day after day, easier to find those replays after the fact, um, but easier just to continue tuning in over time as I continue to create resources for y'all. All right. So without further ado, we are going to jump into tension. If you are here with me live and haven't already, or if you're watching on the replay, go ahead and say hi in the chat or in the comments. I am thrilled to be here. Yvonne, it was not you. It was me. I am extremely late. I was coming from therapy and did not get here on time. So welcome. By the way, for those of you who have actually seen String and Story on Main, uh, you may be noticing like, wait, you're in the shop and you're in an armchair. What's happening? We have created a cozy corner. Um, so we have two armchairs here in the shop now because especially as the weather hopefully starts to cool off at some point, we want to be able to welcome more of y'all in to sit and work on some hand biting or sit and work on some handwork and just spend more time with us. So I'm in the cozy corner at String and Story on Main today. All right. Kisten, you're home safely. I'm so great. Savvy is still in search of his rally leg. Oh no. What happened, Kisten? Alicia. How is Oreo? Noam Gato, Denise, Daddy. Hello in Kingwood, Texas. Helen, Estelle. Oh, I'm thrilled that all of you are here. All right. As I mentioned, we are beginning today. Today's part one of a three-part conversation. We are going to have all about tension. We'll then discuss tension again at the end of next week because this is a really big thing that I hear a lot of questions about. There tends to be a lot of fear and anxiety about. All right. So first up, why is tension important? All right, tension is the balancing of our stitches so that the threads on top of our quilt and on the back of our quilt look the same, all right? It's the top thread and the bobbin thread, and we really want the twist between the two to land in the center of our quilt. And it matters because it adds to the aesthetics of our quilt, right? A nice crisp stitch looks a lot prettier going across our quilt top. It also adds to the longevity of our quilt, right? So we talked about stitch length earlier this week and how big, long stitches can be um, kind of a threat to the longevity of the quilt, right? It's easier for things to get caught on that thread and for the thread to break. And then, you know, over time for our quilting to unravel a bit. It's very similar with um, our tension. And if our tension is off and one of those threads gets broken, it's a lot easier for more stitches to come undone. So having balanced tension adds to the aesthetic value of our quilt and adds just the structure and stability of our quilt. All right. Why is tension such a big fear and anxiety? Well, depending on how you learned to quilt or how you learned to sew and with whom, it's very common, especially if you learned to sew when you were younger with you know an older human teaching you, they said, don't touch the tension, right? Or even if you got your machine and were taking lessons, you may have been told, don't touch the tension, right? Because once you start fooling with it, can we get it balanced again? And so we were given a lot of fear 
around adjusting that knob or pressing those buttons, okay? And what I wanna do over the next three days is educate you about how tension works so that you can feel free to mess with that knob and mess with those buttons in order to get those beautiful stitches. Often when we are piecing, we're just sewing through a couple of um, pieces of fabric. Our tension either doesn't matter quite as much um, or it's not going to be off too badly, right? But with free motion quilting, we've got a lot of movement going on. We really need to make sure that everything is nice and balanced, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna pull that fear back, all right? Let's see. You've tried everything you're currently dealing with thread break. So Yvonne, we're gonna talk about how, it, how tension works today, big, um, big picture, but we're gonna be talking about thread breaks on Tuesday. So stay tuned. I think it's Tuesday, let me double check. Make sure it's not tomorrow. Adjust tension. No, it's tomorrow. So Yvonne, tomorrow we will specifically get into thread breaks because that's a, it's its own whole thing. All right. So Kissin said he decided it was more fun to roll on his back in the ring. Oh my gosh, little baby. Savvy is um, a corgi, by the way. And Savvy came to visit me yesterday. That's why we're talking about it. Hello, hello. Good morning, Grace. See, Jan, you're a perfect example. My life was threatened if I the touched the tension on our old Singer machine. I sure wish I knew then what I know now. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's talk about how tension works big picture, all right? On our sewing machine, we've got our spool of thread. It threads all through the things and then goes through the needle. That thread is called your top thread. And you're like, Holly Ann, this is very basic. But what happens between the spool of thread and the needle eye is really important, okay? Because every single little hook and curve that that thread is making on its way to the needle eye is adding resistance to the top thread, right? If you were to just take your thread, stick it through your needle and sew with it, it would be a mess, right? There has to be some tension on that thread. And so like, you know, a little tug, some resistance on that thread in order for it to stay untangled and for it to feed through the machine at a predictable rate so that when your needle moves, it makes one crisp stitch with a very specific amount of thread based on how much that needle is moving, right? So we need that resistance. You can add or subtract resistance by adjusting your tension. And that's because after you come around the back and you go down and you hook through the little hook, right? the hook that's attached to how the needle's moving. So that's keeping your, uh, your thread and your needle in an appropriate distance from one another. Then it goes down through and it goes through little tension discs, okay? Um, if you have ever seen one of the old singers, actually I have mine right here. I'm gonna wheel y'all, y'all are on a cart. So we're gonna go on a field trip right here, right? This is my great grandmother's Singer 66, right? So the thread comes here and hooks and it goes um, down around this tension disc, right? And so on these old machines, you can actually see the tension discs right on the front that it has to floss down in there, okay? We can't always see that on our modern machines because this is usually turned and it's inside the machine and we just click it through as we're going, right? But that tension disc is really important because that's where you customize the resistance. And you customize the resistance based on the type of stitch that you're using, the type of thread that you're using, all of those kinds of things, all right? So that's our top thread. Then of course we have our bobbin thread. So if you've got a drop-in bobbin, right? You put the bobbin in, you go and put the lid back on. If you have a click-in bobbin, you know, you've put it into the bobbin case and flossed it out, put that up into your machine and draped it around, all right? And those two threads come together to form our stitches, all right? So that needle drops, that bobbin race, depending on, we're going to just talk about a drop-in bobbin for the sake of easy illustration, right? But the concept is the same. That bobbin race is going to twist twice. And what it's doing when it does that is it's literally looping those threads together. All right? So that the bottom thread comes down. There's a little bit of slack in it so that when the bobbin race clicks, it twists. And then that twist goes into the center of whatever we're sewing and the threads lay on the top and back. All right, that's good tension. Where was I going with this? Oh yes, on our domestic machines, we are not adjusting the bobbin tension. That's part of why I'm wanting to talk about a drop-in bobbin because if you have a metal bobbin case um, that has the little screws on the side and the click on the front. So not all bobbins that go in vertically, but any that have that like little metal casing that's common to a long arm. In that case, you technically can adjust resistance at the bobbin level as well. 
but most of the time that's not what we're doing if we're working on a home sewing machine okay that's something that our technician deals with when our technician makes sure our timing is correct etc and they stabilize that bobbin tension what we're concerned about as we begin to have a conversation about adjusting our tension is that tension disc, disc that's up at the top that i was just showing you on the singer or that's inside the casing of our um of our machine on a more modern machine okay and that's when we're either adjusting a knob or pressing buttons we're adding more or less pressure through those discs all right quick overview of when tension goes wrong because ideally that twist is going to land in the middle right tension can go wrong in one of two ways that top tension because that's the one we're adjusting it's a chemistry experiment only one variable right the top tension can either be too loose which means that when that little loop goes down into the bobbin race for our bobbin race to click and make that twist there's too much top thread and it ends up showing on the back of our quilt. That's where we get things like eyelashes, right? Or in the case of what Yvonne is wrestling with, um, they can be too short, right? That loop is too tiny. And when that bobbin race goes to click, one of two things happens. Either no stitches made, right? It, they don't catch each other and you get a skipped stitch. So that's where there's a hole in your quilt or in your project, but there's not an individual stitch twisted through there, right? Or you get a thread break. Now, as we'll talk about tomorrow, and as Yvonne already knows, because she's in Free Motion Quilting Academy, um, there's other things that can cause thread breaks as well. But generally, those are the two ways that our thread tension can go wrong. We're either getting eyelashes on the back, or we're dealing with skip stitches and thread breaks on the top, all right? Like I said, our goal in this is we want to have that twist landing right in the center of our quilt um, so that we've got those nice crisp stitches because they're aesthetically pleasing and they help give our quilt more longevity. All right. Any questions about the overview of what tension is, why it's important, and what we're aiming for by adjusting our tension for free motion quilting? As I mentioned, the next two days, we're going to go very specifically into troubleshooting each of those imbalances uh, because it matters. <laughs> And I want to make sure that y'all have the tools you need. If by any chance you're going, I'm really, really excited for those, for those, you know, troubleshooting guides. Um, what you can do in the meanwhile is, like I said, we want to have only one variable, right? We just want to be adjusting the top tension on our machine. So one of the best things you can do to make sure that you've eliminated all other variables um, is to you know, take the thread out of the machine, take your needle out, take your bobbin casing out, clean everything. If your machine takes oil, oil your machine, put in a new needle, make sure your bobbin is properly wound and loaded and inserted into your machine properly, then re-thread the entire machine. All right. So that's always my like clean slat, slate reset that I do if I'm just having tension issues I can't solve. And then I know that anything going on truly is most likely the tension and it's easier to start to narrow down what's going wrong. So if you're here and you're like, man, I'm really looking forward to that troubleshooting and you have not already done all of those things, make sure you do all of those things between now um, and these next couple of sessions. It is especially important that you make sure you've cleaned out your whole bobbin race and under your needle plate, all of that, brushing that lint out, pulling that lint out, because it is amazing how much lint can affect your tension. All right. Any last questions, rock stars? That is totally okay if not. This was a quick overview today, setting us up for success. All right. If you're typing your questions, type quickly. I'm going to start our review for the end while you're typing. Um, item number one in the caption of this video, you're going to find a blog post all about perfect tension. Hint, hint, it goes ahead and talks about some of the things that are going to be coming up in the next two days. So if you want to read ahead, you're free to do so. Uh, but I invite you to go check that out because there's more videos and more photos in there that are just really good resources for understanding tension and understanding how to work with the tension on your machine. Um, item number two, there is an invitation um, waiting for you in the caption of this video to join me next week for the quilting plan challenge. I want you to feel confident deciding what motifs to quilt on your quilts, uh, confident it's going to 
complement your piecing and look beautiful. And I'm going to break that whole process down for you next week over five days. And then I will share with you how you can be part of the 10th cohort of Free Motion Quilting Academy. Finally, if you have not already, go ahead and hit subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can find me almost every day this month. I'm live at 11 a.m. Eastern. And I want you to be able to jump in with me uh, so that we can continue getting your answers questions, your answers questions, your questions answered around free motion quilting. And as we head into enrolling that 10th cohort, uh, we've got our 12 days of FMQ FAQ right now. Then we're going to do the quilting plan challenge. And then we're actually going to be talking all about the mindset of learning something new as an adult um, and kind of starting that learning process and how that can be hard. And my mindset tips and tricks for that journey, as well as some good like quilting demos. So it's a packed month, y'all. I'm going to be here a lot with y'all and it's amazing. All right. So there are your three reminders. And on this note, Alicia says Oreo has made his new home underneath the long arm. I love that. Havana loves to be under my long arm. So that makes a lot of sense. Rockstars, thank you so much for joining me today to, for this overview of what tension is, why it matters, and where we are headed with this. Um, and I'm looking forward to spending the next couple of days with you uh, troubleshooting both too loose and too tight tension. All right. Let's see. Mary says, I purchased the FMQ Academy, but life happens. So glad it's never too late to start. It is not. And Mary, this is wonderful timing. I'm glad to have you jump in with us this time. And we will get you as far as we can without more life happening. And if more life happens, you'll still have access to the class. That's one of the magical things about Free Motion Quilting Academy. Alicia says, when I was little, I went to town on my mom's tension knob and I thought she was going to kill me. <laughs> well, I have great news. By teaching y'all all about tension, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, reverse a little bit of this childhood trauma that we all seem to have experienced around tension. And maybe I can prevent us from having to be um, quite so terrifying to the young sewists in our own lives. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I hope you are reassured that tension is something that can be understood. It's something that we can adjust, something that we can fix. And I'm going to show you more about how to do that in the next couple of days. I'll see you tomorrow, rock stars.